<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Box Office Banner. I am continuously fucking up the numbers. You know, we're trying to get back in the mix of things. This is actually episode 91, the episode we recorded first, but will be released on Friday. Lights Out is actually number 92. But yeah, we're back on track. We're trying to get it moving again. We had a lot of shit going on with my vacation and then COVID stuff happened and all this other stuff. But we're getting there, man. We should have a full roster again next week, and episodes are starting to roll out. We exactly should. Exactly how they should. We should have yeah. a full roster. Who knows, man? Who fucking knows, We're doing man. our best here, guys, but uh, we got some news. Yeah, we got a couple new news, new news Let's things do for you. What do you got, and, Brandon? Uh, we all, I was, fuck it, yeah, I'll just jump in. We'll get to them as we go. Um, Scarlett Johansson, as we all know, she filed the lawsuit to Disney and all that. Apparently, a new report came out saying this is how much money, I guess, she had lost through this process, or as they see it. Here, I'll just read it just in case I completely fuck that up. Uh, Johansson tried to negotiate with Disney with an eye on receiving a sum of $100 million. It's a lot of fucking money. For one movie? <laughs> like, that is yeah. absurd. Yeah. One movie? It's bananas, dude. And it says this total was calculated based on what the star would receive in a hypothetical global box office take of $1.2 billion. Based on the totals of past MCU movies, this would be on top of Johansson's original $20 million salary. The $100 million was a starter number, but Disney never made a counter. See, offer. that's ridiculous to me. $100 million for one movie. No, that's ridiculous what, to any of us. What <laughs> is... What is the highest paid actor in a movie. Well, I wonder what that is. Like, like Iron Man, like Robert Downey Jr. How much did he get for Avengers? Or uh, it makes you curious. <laughs> you see the numbers and you're just staring at him. You're like, DiCaprio how much for are Titanic. These guys making Wolf really? of Wall Street. Like, how much did? Usually, it's between you know 10, 20, 25 million. They have that uh that little club that Jim Carrey used to be in. It was like the $20 million club where he, they wanted, he wanted to do a movie unless he's getting $20 million at oh, least. Yeah. That's what got Van Damme fucked. A lot of people don't know that. But Van Damme, the reason why he had his complete fall is because when Jim Carrey released like three big yeah. fucking bangers in 94, yeah. he got greedy and thought he was a bigger star than he was yeah. and tried to be the most top paid guy. It all makes drugs, sense, man. They, all the drugs were speaking and then he basically got blackballed after that because yeah, it was hard to deal sucks. with. But $100 million for one movie, which isn't, it's a great movie. I haven't seen it, but I've heard great things about it. Not, I'm not bashing it at all, but there's no way it's better than, you know, like... Black Panther, or oh my God, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, because no, if the general everyone loves Black Panther. I think the general consensus is that, but I'm the guy that will argue that all day. Well, you don't really like Black Panther. Uh, it's okay to I'm, me. I'm not a big. I'm not fan saying of, it's the, it's the best Marvel yeah. movie. I'm just saying, but like in the general consensus, it's one of the best. To me, I'm not a big well, fan. This movie is. I already admitted it might be my favorite Marvel movie. As crazy as that is. What. Uh, Black Widow. Black really? Widow fucking blew me away. Oh, just because you it, love uh, that it, one girl. Yeah, that. And I, I, I love her too, man. I love the Captain America and uh, Black Widow style of fighting in the movies too. They're yeah. more like, you know, they're cut a certain way. I mean, it's a little choppy, but it, for like American action, it's dope. So that kind of keeps me on my feet because I'm the big it's martial cool. arts guy. And the movie just worked in general. David Harbour was amazing, of course. Yeah, dude, Blue. he's great. He was uh, amazing. The reason I say that is because like Black Panther – didn't just hit all the superhero uh, people that love superhero. It also reached like the black community. They're I was like say, a call black a spade a spade. Black people were coming out in forces. Yeah, dude. Dude, they, were dressed they up, up loved as pure it. Africans, and that's and great. And I do. I love that for them. I was happy to see. Yeah, it. I was and like, that's so cool. The same thing happened with the Black Widow. It's bringing in all types of women, to, to, and you know, showing like a woman superhero can. Like you said, make your favorite Marvel movie. Like yeah, man. I mean, but I, I don't think it's in the hundred million. Is it's in worth my top it. three. It's or, like tied with. I gotta watch it again and see if it tops the other two. But yeah, it's it might be my favorite. And that's it's generally liked. You have like those like three out of ten people that are like that movie's ass for this, this, and this. But most people do enjoy it. I seem to like it more than most. Though, if we're like talking about how much I like it, but yeah, I thought it was 
fucking I mean, amazing. I mean, pay that woman, damn it. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, That's don't insane. pay her a hundred million. Like, there's people with all this COVID stuff that you know they're losing jobs, they're getting fired for not getting vaccine, yeah, and all this stuff. And you're asking for a hundred million dollars for a movie. I mean, I guess if the contract, I know she lost a lot of money, but not a hundred million dollars, like. If I, if dude, if I could act and do one movie, and if I made a hundred million dollars, you would never see my ass on TV again. Yeah, like I'm cashing out. Yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> I don't want to get too popular. Come on, man. <laughs> That's a lot of fucking. But it makes me. I love you, Scarlett how, Johansson, but you're not getting I love everything million, about you. Dude. That's. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next it's thing. It's a little crazy. Cause that, cause that kind of bugs um, me. <laughs> it's me the wrong way. Dude. Let's just say, I, I'm gonna watch it. I'm sure I'm gonna Joe's. love it. Right. Maybe we'll start getting paid that for this podcast. Yeah, one uh, day. Hold our breath. <laughs> um, another news. Uh, Christopher Nolan dropped a bombshell, as this article says. The director talking to multiple studios on film he'll direct about J. Robert Oppenheimer and development of the A-bomb in World War II. So this would uh, bring Christopher Nolan back into the war setting. I'm actually a really... Christopher Nolan, I don't want to say hit or miss, but he's got a few movies... Tenet being one of them where I think he's trying too hard. It's like way too convoluted. Yeah, I, I need to watch it again, but like I had the pleasure of seeing it at home because that's when COVID, I still was like, do I go out yet? <laughs> and I was pausing each thing. So I had the pl- the privilege of being like, let me pause it, think about this. This movie makes no sense. I don't care what anybody fucking says. Uh, but Dunkirk, it was refreshing. It was one of his more it was straight, great. I liked straightforward it. movies. There wasn't much of a story, but it kind of threw you into the mix of things, almost like you were there in the war. And I thought that effect it had on it was good. So it's interesting to see him pick up another war movie, and I wonder if it'll be kind of more like that, Dunkirk style. But I think it'll be more, since he's focusing on Oppenheimer, I think it'll be a little more in-depth and doing stuff like that. But I can't imagine them doing too many twists with this, which is refreshing for me, even though... Nolan has some of the better twists I've seen. Yeah. Like I said, he's gotten a little too convoluted with them. This would be more of a straightforward story where I think he dives deep, and I think that's where he needs a movie like this. So I'm interested in that, interested to see him go back to like the yeah. war I mean, genre for sure. And just this is like I was saying, it's a development, his role in developing the atom bomb. So I mean, well, it could be very interesting. If anybody could do this, Christopher Nolan's definitely. Well, one. yeah, I mean, Christopher Nolan, he's one of the better better directors out there today. You know. If he if he makes a movie, I guess say no, ever at this point, he, yeah, he's I mean, changed cinema. If he yeah. makes a movie, no matter what it's about <laughs> or you know the plot or anything, it's gonna it's gonna be good. It's either gonna blow your mind or confuse yeah. the fuck out of you, yeah. or it's, it's gonna have you feeling a certain type of way when you go see the a Christopher Nolan movie, just like the Batman's man, The yeah. Dark Knight. Yep, one of the best movies ever. It's just. Christopher Nolan knows what he's doing, so I I trust him that this is going to be a very enjoyable movie, no matter you know what the plot is. Yeah, and it it will at least sell, whether we like it with or his don't name like on it. it with his name on it, it's going to sell. It's going to make. And like you said, the Dark Knight, night. not too convoluted, not trying to do too much. No, I think he he's due for a movie like this where, at least on paper, if he tries to make this one convoluted, it's a story about, you know, the fucking, you know, atom bomb, dude. I mean, or A-bomb, yeah. Like, wh- how could you make this convoluted? If he tries yeah. to somehow make this convoluted, it'll be a big fucking mistake, but I don't think he'll do that, because as much as he does that, that's with original properties. He'll res- respect the source yeah. material and his knowledge on it and just make a clean story. Yeah, out. just make a good movie that's not all about twists and turns yeah, and, and super complicated. Yeah, definitely not here at least. He would definitely He can at that do point, both. He can do both, really. Yeah, he will have jumped the shark and I'd be like, I don't have faith in no one anymore cuz that was the dumbest decision I ever made, but I don't think he'll do that. No. He's due for one of these. I'm excited. Um this is old news. Uh, we I was going to do news last week, but I ended up saying fuck it, I'll just drop a bunch of knee-jerk reactions. It's me by myself. Away from my guys. This is one news story I'm recycling just because I'm such a big Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan. We're talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre now being dealt to Netflix. And this one's an interesting one because I really want to see this one in the theater. It just feels wrong not being able to see this in the theater. I don't like that. Then I have that 
thought of like, well, at least it's in Netflix hands because Netflix actually has some pretty good movies now, like not ones they recycle. You know, yeah, they're like, hit or miss, but when they hit, they hit. Yeah, man. so that makes me a little excited, but at the same time, maybe I'm just in that older, st- you know, state of mind where I'm thinking like, yeah, but it's it could have been a theater experience. What if they're dumping this in Netflix? Cause they realize it's not going to sell, so like at least we'll get a bunch of clicks on Netflix. So mm. that scares me too. Um, overall, I'm not overly disappointed with this news, but I'm not, I'm also not too happy about it. it it's just one of those wait and see do type you, of situations. Do you, do you have any like news about it? Like, is it going to be like a prequel, a sequel or a standalone or? No, this is a, like a direct sequel to the original again. I believe we talked okay. about that. Now it's like old man Leatherface, So he's going to be like old as fucking dirt. <laughs> really? Yeah. But I mean, it's kind of like you, we see the direct sequel with Michael Myers and he's fucking old as shit and that. So I yeah. guess it could work, you know? I mean, if it's a direct, if the original Halloween is a direct sequel to 78s, then Michael Myers is old as fuck. This is the, a direct sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is 74. So, yeah, I mean, they could definitely do this. It seems like he's a little too old, but maybe not. Maybe they could do something cool with it. I'm just tired of, I've already said this before, it's not really what this segment's about. I'm just tired of, like, this, like, erase everything, go back to the first one thing. Like, that was Damn. cool for a while, but now they're kind of running into the ground with these horror franchises. But we'll see what they do on Netflix. Hopefully it's good. Um, we don't do trailer reactions anymore because YouTube is just on some fuckery or the studios that fucking put out these trailers. Whatever it is, I mean, we love YouTube for broadcasting this, but whatever is going on where we cannot, you know, we can, but they talk about it affecting our ability to be monetized in the future and going forward if we keep posting these videos we're reacting to. But it even says, like, when you're arguing, like, do you want to represent this as, you know, you were doing a reaction video, meaning, like, you're saying that so you can say, hey, yeah, we're doing this. And then it's supposed to be like, oh, my bad, and clear it up. But there's sometimes they still are like, that's not good enough. That's not what you're doing. It's like, it's literally what we're doing. Maybe we're not big enough yet and you don't fucking care about us. I don't fucking know. But we can at least talk about trailers without the video. Not a reaction, but like... They're very popular trailers, so... Yeah. And we're not going to do this about every trailer. That's why we haven't even talked about trailer yet, but this is two huge ones and... Uh, and and we're, big before we talk about them, if you want to, just pause us, this you know, and us. go watch the trailer and then come right back and hear our take. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah, it's always an option, Give too. us double the views. That'd be cool. Um. Yeah. No doubt. Which there one are we is. talking about first? Um, let's do uh, Dexter, dude. Dexter. Oh, my God. We yeah. finally got some other than the teasers. The teasers gave just enough. This yeah. one gave a whole fucking lot. Uh-huh. You could say it's maybe a little too much, but at the uh-huh. same time, you can tell there's so much more left to be delved into because we don't even know anything about the killer after this trailer. We don't really know shit. We just got, like, an idea. Like, we knew there was going to be a killer, and they mentioned a killer, briefly but we don't know there's so much to dive into so i'm not mad about this and we all had suspicions and it was kind of cool to have our suspicions yeah. answered i mean did you um, enjoy the trailer did this just hype you up dude even more? yes anything De- dude dexter like yeah. me and brandon dude yeah uh breaking Bad's number one dexter's number two dexter's his number one right dexter man d- this after watching this trailer, they, it gives a lot away. And then we were talking after this trailer. We're like, There's, that's a lot. They showed a lot, and that's a lot to put into a season. But yeah, we we were talk, We want more than one <laughs> season, man. Like, I didn't if this season at hits, first, if this season, so fresh, if this season hits well, and it's going to do well with all the Dexter fans. Like, even if you didn't watch Dexter when it was on Showtime, when it was coming out every Sunday or Wednesday or whatever it came out. Yeah. Uh, it's only gotten more popular over the years because people are like, hey, watch Dexter. Hey, watch Dexter. Yeah, and then they'll Netflix watch it on shit. like Netflix <laughs> or something like that. Dexter has only gotten more popular. And I and with this season, it showed a lot. And I'm like, there, there's got to – hopefully to God, they yeah. make another two or three seasons. I'm just one of them people when I find a show like Dexter or Breaking Bad, I don't want it to end, man. Especially I don't care, man. It's just that so seen good. And you love already. Like it feels like a complete rebirth. Like it feels like they, judging by the trailers and like the direction they're going to be going. Yeah. You know, I don't know. We we should do spoilers here. Uh, spoilers. If you don't want to know what happens in the trailers, there's two big reveals. Uh, going now. Something that I suspected and a lot of people suspected. And then I kind of heard it wrote about an article. Is like, is this legit? Well, seeing is believing. 
Be gone, be gone if you don't want to hear this. Deb is there. She's talking over Dexter's shoulder, saying, like, basically becoming, you know, the new Dark Passenger type of character. Like, she's Harry the, was. I think she's the voice of reason, yeah, like Harry was. Yeah. She's Harry, whereas Harry would say the things to keep him out of trouble. Now, Deb gives that. Uh, literally, I haven't said this. Like, I, can you not picture Deb being like, have you not learned anything? And then in yeah. the trailer, she says that the exact line. And you know, so Deb's, like, yes. you know, Deb's like, potty mouth and she's like are you fucking serious you're yeah. gonna fucking do this and Perfect. blah 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 i love that they're bringing deb back a lot of people don't really like deb but <laughs> i'll never understand i love that girl dude yeah, like that man. actress shout like out to person. yeah exactly one of From the best our, criers on tv no, dude i swear some people are like she's annoying it's like dude not like i believe every time she's sad times a hundred yeah and just the thought of that and then at the very end of the trailer if you stay tuned that last little clip after it's like dexter showtime they give you one more thing and harrison as an you know adult basically he's like an older teenager whatever yeah. he's supposed to be in the show dexter's son makes an appearance yeah harrison he's right there dude he's fucking dude, like I like i'm your wait. son now, just those two things tells me, like, yeah, we could cram all this into one season, but think about a fresh start with Deb as the first voice of reason, like you were saying, the Vore, as I yeah. would call it, if we would abbreviate it, uh, and Harrison coming into his life and, like, the trials and tribulations that that could cause. You know what I mean? They could what? do some more with this than one season. I don't necessarily want to drag it out, but now that, like, some of, like, my thoughts have been confirmed... And, like, some other ones that we're hearing, like, it's like, man, maybe they could do more with this. Like, you even said, like, give me more. See, I was like, let's not do that, dude. Because, like, I don't know how much they have to give, but, like, I'm on board with that, too, now. Like, with everything I've seen, some beliefs have been confirmed. I just feel like it's a completely fresh start. What if Harrison's, like, the, the, the killer in the season, and then yeah. he meets up with Dexter, and Dexter's like, oh, wow. It could uh, be, yeah. This who knows, is kind of weird. He's got a, He's supposed to kill his son. Dexter's apparently in a relationship with a cop. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, yeah, that yeah. was like I was like he's getting pulled over, and then uh, yeah, out yeah. of nowhere, and it kind of got happy for a second, then got a little darker, and was like, oh, reveals, and then it was like, oh shit, here we go. This trailer did nothing but hype me up oh, even I'm more. I'm so excited. You're talking about there's a variation of like the theme in the trailer. They kind of did it with like a piano. That yeah. was fucking cool. Gave me like little goosebumps. I was like, yes, yes, yes. Like this is creeping up, guys. It's like a couple months away now. Is, well, it, a, is it November? I'm thinking it's November. Mid-November, I, late November. I don't have the date wrote yeah, down. Yeah, November. But I'm going to have to get cable just so I can fucking watch this. Yeah, I'm going to have to add Showtime. Yeah, to I, I just buy a Showtime app. I don't need all that other shit. Dexter, there's no way I'm not watching this. Is there a Showtime week. app? I'm sure there I'm is. Sure, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's got to be. I mean, you can have Hulu and get Showtime, but then I don't know if they do like the live. Yeah. You know, is it free live. with Hulu though, or is no, it you like have to get, you get Hulu on. and then you spend like four ninety nine or something? It's yeah. Hulu with the add on. That's all I know. But Dexter, man, be, be yeah, ready dude. for that. I'm just super hyped. That's super stoked, dude. I can't wait for that. Super stoked with that super smoke. And the other one that has to be talked about, this was in my top 10 most anticipated of the year, but I wanted to wait to see a trailer if it could be everything I thought it would be. And you know what? It was a little different, but it was also really cool. Uh, Matrix Resurrections, dude. This trailer, yeah. honestly, like, I really liked the first time. Watching it again to get, like, another refresher, like, I liked it even more. Like, I'm hyped. This is the same situation as Dexter. It feels like they can make, at first I thought it was just, like, one more movie, it feels like this whole movie is almost going to be like a re-origin story. We're going to see Neo basically become Neo again. He's going to find himself and figure out who he was. Carrie Ann Moss, obviously, is in there, too. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne's not in it. I do have a thought, though. Uh, I forget the dude's name. Guy was the star of Candyman is playing Morpheus now. But I wonder if that's like a... Maybe there's a twist or something at the end where Lawrence Fishburne comes back as Morpheus and, like, maybe... Uh, the guy from Candyman is only playing uh, Morpheus in like the real world or whatever the Matrix world, like one or the other type of thing. Maybe that could be like a cool little spin. And uh, I mean, that's just what this movie is. It looks like it's it's basically going to be like an origin story. It's going to be uh, Thomas, as they call him in the trailer. I guess I can't really remember it. Maybe that was even uh, Neo's original name. They told him he was Neo. Uh, that. Is going to be interesting. I feel like it's going to be the whole movie. It's going to be a build up to like who he is, who he is, and at the end, he's going to become who he is. Remember, he's Neo, and it's going to be epic because we're all going to be like, "Oh my God, is he now? Oh, 
<laughs> like it's gonna be fucking insane. You know, Carrie Ann Moss is gonna be like, oh, just it out. Like you're gonna be losing your shit if you're a big Matrix fan. Which yeah. for me, I like the second. Think the third's not bad, but it's the epitome of average. The first one is an all-time action classic. It changed fucking cinema. So I'm a huge fan for that alone. And, like, we're going to be geeking out on that. And you're telling me that we're watching a whole movie, at least as it looks on the trailer, that's all been go by, of him trying to find himself, find himself, and they all kind of find themselves at the end of the movie, and it's just going to be over? No, you're going to be like, now they're who they they're who they are again. I want to see them again in a full movie as Neo, Trinity, Morpheus, all that all over again. So you're definitely, especially the Cells, going to get more than one movie and i'm excited for that now that i'm kind of putting that into perspective i don't know how you feel about it the trailer fucking yeah the trailer looked amazing me, actually so yeah uh mph in there dude neil patrick harris so yeah cool. good yeah. old neil good old neil but yeah i'm hyped for this shit man um you got anything else to add anything anything uh jackass four got pushed back mm-hmm. that was another one of the last week's one but if you haven't heard do a quick run through of some of that stuff oh no jackass 4 got pushed back which sucks and then uh top gun maverick comes out memorial day when is memorial day you see like i found out what memorial day is like a week before at my job when they're like hey we're off on monday or whatever it is i don't know the exact date i guess it's not you know i don't know just Um, don't just got to be honest about that. Uh, uh, May? So it's not going to come out until 2022? Yeah. That Damn it. about right. Like, motherfucker. They'll probably push it back again. Yeah, dude. This sucks, but... I think... Uh, not 100% sure. I should have wrote this down. Um, Venom, again, got moved around. I think it got moved to, like, October 1st, I want to say. This year, though, right? Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, but it got moved... It got pushed back to the same day Halloween Kills is released, which I hated because then... Venom would get the IMAX treatment, so I couldn't see Halloween Kills in IMAX. Because, you know, yeah. it's your one movie in IMAX, so that hurt me, at least at our theater. And then I was like, also, Halloween Kills is going to have to be battling with Venom. Even though I could see it winning, still it's like a superhero kind of movie. I didn't want that for Halloween Kills, so like, if that is in fact true, I'm almost 100% sure it is. It's been pushed back now a couple weeks back towards... Uh, you know, sooner, October yeah. 1st. So that helps out Halloween Kills. Yay. And then actually, you know, I can see Venom probably now because I wasn't going to see back-to-back movies or anything unless it's something that merited it. And Venom, I want to see it. Not too, too much. But, yeah, a little add-on at the end there. Yeah. And anything else? No. No, I guess that's mm-hmm. it. It's news. Uh, yep. Uh, follow us on Instagram it's and news. Spotify at the official Box Office Banner. YouTube at Box Office Banter. And join our Facebook group at Box Office Banner Movies and also Box Office Banner. You. Yeah. You. Yeah.